really interesting work here uh, on this paper. And of course, the relevance now is really interesting because it tells us how the Catholic Church was involved in helping to reshape Argentinian debt. When you look back on that now, uh, what does it tell you? Well, I, I think that the, the church's relationship with the government of Argentina is very complex. Um, it's reluctant to uh, embrace the government and the government's economic policies in general. But in the matter of the debt, uh, the crushing burden of the Argentine debt in the early 2000s, at 1.50 percent of the Argentine people were uh, below the poverty line, and unemployment rate was close to 30 percent. The church, uh, drawing upon religious and moral traditions uh, of the church, uh, weighed in, I think, very uh, Importantly, uh, uh, in, in that debate, representing civil society and, and arguing that, yes, even though debt contracted should be paid, there were moral limits to how much uh, sacrifice could be demanded of the people. In other words, human um, development at some point uh, has to take precedence uh, over debt service after reasonable efforts, as I write in the paper, are made to pay the debt. So, Thomas, is there thoughts that in his new role as the Pope, he could be getting involved in the austerity debate in Europe? Uh, well, I think the Church is loath to tread too uh, deeply into the details of, you know, whether uh, Mr. Cameron's policies or Paul Ryan's policies or wherever uh, are the right policies. I don't think it wants to get into that level, but it always wants, uh, I think, drawing upon the Church, and I think looking at the life of this man, uh, Jorge uh, Maria uh, uh, Bergoglio, uh, looking at his life, uh, I think they're always going to want to see how, what's the impact on the, on the average person, what's the, and in particular, what are the impacts of these policies, which may sound good to the macroeconomists and to the banks uh, and to some politicians, but what are the impacts on the poor, and especially the, the poorest of the poor? Yeah, he will not in a There's this wonderful quote uh, uh, in a piece I read about your, your article, and uh, it's from uh, Bergoglio when he was cardinal, and he said uh, at the time of the uh, uh, restructuring the debt, said, the unjust distribution of good persists, creating a situation of social sin that cries out to heaven and limits the possibilities of a fuller life for so many of our brothers. So really addressing yeah. the needs of the poor through a restructuring of debt. And I, I've got to wonder, you know, given what's going on in Europe, if he doesn't uh, very much get involved in economic matters. Well, I think it, I think I wouldn't be surprised either. You're right about that. I do think he's talking about the particular circumstances that we face here in Latin America, where the, the poverty levels are, uh, are more extensive, the income distribution is far less uh, just, and the levels of human development are, are generally lower. I, I do think there is a context there to his comments that can't immediately be superimposed, uh, let's say, on Europe. Uh, but, uh, but yes, I think, uh, I think uh, what the man has written and the, uh, the bishops that he led have said uh, would lead me to believe that uh, there's a message there uh, for uh, those who preach uh, austerity, but might, uh, beyond a certain point, uh, 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 human development has to, take, uh, has to take precedence. And I think that'll be his message, but I, I do believe it'll be um, uh, low-key, because I think that seems to be his style.